Welcome to Westlake Grill at Heritage Ranch. My name's Jonah, follow me. All right, welcome back. Today we have a special guest. We're hanging out with Chef Raj here, oh. the man, the magic behind, uh, behind Westlake Grill's kitchen. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about, he's gonna be showing us what we're having tonight for our Indian dinner, because Raj here is from India. So we, he's gonna be doing, he wants to showcase some of his home style dishes, and uh, he's gonna whip up a dish and uh, explain it. Okay, how are you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are all doing good. Um, today we have an Indian night. Every month we're doing our Indian night once a day. Uh, so it's kind of five course menu. We started with two appetizers, and two main course and one desert. That's what we're doing. And authentic Indians, it's a kind of like uh, different which province food we are doing. Because every province in India has a different unique flavors and like, uh, unique food items also. Um, but what I'm doing here, I'm getting local product here, what we can get, like a beef, local beef, local vegetables. Then I'm working on with Indian spices on it. So it's gonna kind of like a fusion, but it is bringing a good flavor on it too, because of fresh and then the Indian spices on there. So it give you like a more unique aroma and flavor. Mm. So the one of the item today I'm gonna do, it's a triple A braised brisket. It's a curry braised brisket. So I got some kind of like South Indian spices and I'm gonna braise them brisket like eight hours. And um, it's gonna be have a nice curry on it. And it's gonna be served with uh, quinoa biryani. So usually biryani made with the basmati rice, but I'm gonna make a biryani with the quinoa. So the quinoa has nice, nice and healthy. People will like it. That's kind of something different people will try. So let's start with that. So put some oil. And then how long have you been cooking, Raj? I'm cooking so far like 18 years. 18, 18 to 19 years. 18 yeah. to 19 years. Okay, some cinnamon sticks. So just not too much. Um, just have a little bit of flavor on it. So. I have a couple of cinnamon sticks, but break it by like four pieces. And add some pepper. Some bay leaves. So why I put in lots of bay leaves? Because the reason is, when you're cooking a big piece of meat, like a brisket is a large piece, like this is gonna be like a seven kg of brisket. So they need like lots of flavor on it. But if you're cooking like a cubes of meat, you don't need this much flavors because they take the, the piece, small piece take the flavors really quick. And this is gonna be like eight hours and depend on the beef too. This is gonna be like a little bit, brisket is always like a fatty and like hard part of the brisket. So you need to be either smoke or braised, slow cook, that's all that helps. Just so everything yeah, tastes it is, on it's the It's not like a tenderloin, like a tenderloin cooks really quick, right? Yeah. So once it's done, you can see that nice, you can feel the aroma coming out. Mm -hmm, I can so, smell it already. Yeah. So nice, like that. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring the brisket now. So this is the brisket. What I did overnight, I have a uh, fennel powder. It's a fennel usually like give nice the meat, red meat, any red meat, the fennel give nice flavor. I use, people use for pork, yeah. but if you do for fennel and the goat in India, they do. Yeah. The red meat, like lamb, they do fennel too. Okay. So I try with the beef. Yeah. And then some, uh, some um, South Indian spices, like a coriander, cumin, and dry chili, like mm. a red chili powder. Yeah, yeah. And then some asafoetida, like kind of asafoetida, it's like you know, some kind of spices. It's yeah. not a true spice, it's kind of flavorful. Oh. It's get from South India. Okay. So, and then some of the mustard powder. Like mustard the, powder, yeah. Yeah, we have a dark mustard, so I ground the dark mustard. And oh. then it's kind of basic ingredients, but it gives you a nice flavor on it. Yeah. So I, I marinated all these spices with the turmeric. Turmeric is very important when you come to Indian cooking. Yeah. It is like antibiotics, they call that. Yeah, yeah. In uh, South Indian cooking, yeah. um, mostly like everything has a turmeric. Okay. And they have curry leaves. Yeah. So they, that's kind of like really healthy for cooking too. It's yeah. Like, so it's not only it's not only for flavor, but it's also for your body. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's what they use. Like most of the Indian cooking coming on southern side, um, it's not just about food. It's yeah. about your health. That's amazing. Depend on the seasoning, what fruits you're getting. That's yeah. same thing here, right? Like a seasonal, like spring and you know fall and whatever, like we're getting the vegetables, we're cooking on it. Yeah. Same like in India. So every season, four season, they get a different vegetables, different fruits. Well, that's what they're playing with. Wow. So, 
So next time I'm gonna put this brisket right here. You let that sit like that overnight? Or yeah, how long? yeah, I just did, a, did overnight. Overnight, yeah. With a lots of flavor it's gonna be. Yeah, no doubt. And then it's like a seven kg. So I'm gonna it's put a it a beautiful right piece of meat right there. <laughs> And then we have a few Indian beers to pair with it this evening. So you'll have to stay tuned for that or even come by and check it out yourself for next month. So make sure it's not too burned. Keep it simmer. So when you keep simmer, so they don't burn the spices, but the spices cook a little slowly on the oil yeah. on the pan so they get the proper flavor. Otherwise it's gonna be burned. Yeah. So okay. what I do like the rest of these spices, you can put them on here. It looks like a lot of stuff. It's going to be so much spicy, but it's not. <laughs> Once it all cooks off and everything, it'll yeah, it's, it's not like a lot of chili here. It, it is like a cumin, coriander, um, and then fennel. So that's what they look like. Lots of spices here, turmeric, and all the stuff. Yeah. But the I put less chili because less mostly chili. like yeah, we got to be handle the heat, right? Yeah, I know. We're not we're not all heat experts. <laughs> so, <laughs> can't handle the heat. So I will make sure of that. Oh, that smells so good. Oh. If you're outside right now, you can probably smell it, but you're probably not, you're probably at home. So you'll have to come by next time. It's nicely getting. Yeah, it's really coming. It smells like sweet, kind of sweet to it. It's nice. Because the fennel, right? The yeah, fennel the gives all this sweet taste. Uh, Every time like, you, you eat fennel with anything, then after you swallow, then you feel the sweet sweetness, on it. Sweetness, like, right? like licorice sheet. Yeah. So nicely roasting right now. So by the time, what we're gonna do, so I have some ginger and garlic paste. Ginger and garlic paste? Yes. So we put on the side. Oh. You put the ginger and garlic. What we're doing here, why I put the ginger garlic early, because I'm not going to be sorted the onion too long. Yeah. That's for uh, bricing. Yeah. So the onion needs to be like a sweet taste uh, on it. So you just want to so bring the flavor. So bricing slowly, the yeah. onion. Only like, you got to be sorted the onion for 20% 20, 20 not like 50% onion. Just 20% sorted, 20% yeah. cook, then yeah. it's good. Then it's going to be bricing with the beef and it gets a nice flavor. But the ginger garlic needs to be cooked uh, really good before bricing. Otherwise, it's going to be so much like a hot. Oh, and the ginger it, heat will yeah, be there the heat still? will be there, oh, okay. raw flavor and kind of. So yeah, yeah, all oh, the raw why, flavor. OK, yeah, yeah. That is the most most thing like uh, cooking, to know which items you got to put first, which ingredients you got to put late. Yeah. So later, you know, so which one you got to be cooked longer, which one is not cooked. Even when you're dicing up the onion, like you, some of the food, why we doing a brunoise? Why are we doing dice? The reason is there is a unique flavor on it. Okay. If you, it is not like every items, every food you make, it has to be the same size onion. Yeah, yeah. It's not a different. Like when you make a risotto, you need to be like a diced up proper. When you make a picardi gallo, it has to be a different size. And when you're making like a um, biryani, it yeah. has a slice on it. There is a reason. There is a unique flavor with uh, each cutting too. So huh. now. The more we know. Yeah. And that's the same thing with the ginger garlic. You don't want to yes, overcook wanna the, it. You just want to. I just want to get the aroma on the ginger garlic, so you don't feel the raw. The raw heat, flavor to it. The yeah. The raw flavor and raw heat on your throat, like when you are eating, right? Yeah. So. That's okay. What and then you you said you'll add onions in a little bit. In yes, a little after bit. after the ginger garlic cooked, then we're gonna add the onion because you don't need any spices here. There's yeah. already the spices in the brisket. Yeah. So when you put all the ingredients and when you're braising it, the spices will combine, combine with everything. Oh, so man. now we're gonna pan the brisket. It's kind of good. Oh, oh, oh yeah. So now you guys see that? Like yeah. how the spice get nicely nice. colored. Yeah, nice brown, not yeah. burnt. That's why you need to keep it like really slow temperature. Okay, same time we cook this. So we're putting the onions on the sides. Add in some onions. Now the onion mixed with the ginger and garlic. 
see that? Sound is nicely mixed with ginger oh, and garlic. Yeah. And the pot like this side, we have the heat we have on the other side too. So nicely cooked. You see that flavor already came. You see this onion cooking and you, see, you, you, you feel the flavor, right? Yeah, I you can, can smell, smell that. it. Yeah. It's all coming together. Tomato next. Tomatoes. So okay. the same thing we're going to put on the sides. Either you can take out the brisket, then you can saute all the stuff, and you can put the brisket on top. Either you can do. Yeah. But I save more time like this. Yeah. And anyway, it's a bigger pot. If it's a smaller pot, then you have to take out the brisket separate. After and then they cook. add everything. Then add all the onion and everything, then put the brisket on top and braise them. Okay. Because bigger the bigger pot, is, it's not a problem. And it's just only one brisket. Yeah. So. Let everything kind of cook together all yes. at once. Add a salt after you put tomato. Because salt? the tomato cooks, yeah. Okay. Tomato cooks really good. And why is that? Because the to tomato has a... Uh, the saltiness, they cook the tomatoes because the water, right? More water. Oh, okay, so yeah. So they reduce the more water from the tomato, from oh. the salt. So they cook it really quick. Okay, so it reduces and the water, or takes yes. out the moisture. Yeah. Okay. And this uh, brisket has already seasoned. I put lots of salt on the meat. Yeah. So we need to just salt for the onion, tomatoes, which we're making the curry right now. So look at this. It's nice. So I cook a little bit longer on the tomatoes, it's fine. We're just gonna have to start you a cooking show, Raj. Oh, uh, sure, yeah. <laughs> I like to cook different food, like not all the time same. Yeah. You know, I create something or make something different. It is always the better. Like your chef's tables are always amazing. We do chef because tables. chef table is, he can create whatever he want, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's pretty fantastic. So people like excited about that. That's what I like this here. Yeah. Um, I work uh, different countries too, and everywhere, like even in India, because the thing is here, I like it. People will try the new things. Yeah. If you create something new, they're really excited to try it. Yeah. Some uh, some places they want just traditional food. Just they don't the wanna, same thing. Yeah, they don't want to try something new or. Something, they cannot encourage that because yeah. here, if you cook anything new, people here, they really love it. Yeah, yeah like, we have a good clientele that appreciate yeah. it. They're, they're, they're really excited to come back again to try the new things. So it makes, as a chef, it makes you more like um, like interest like to make things. Yeah. You want to do you want to do better, you want to yeah, do more. Yeah, you want to do better, you want to try something things. new, creative things. Just like tonight. So now we're going to add coconut milk. Coconut milk. Yeah. So we're going to put lots of coconut milk here. Why are you adding uh, coconut milk? It's a flavor. And it's cut down the spices too, but it's mostly for flavor, right? Mm. That's a way of cooking like curry with coconut. They finish them with the coconut Yeah. Uh, in southern India. Uh, not all the curries, but most of the like when you're cooking goat or lamb or anything, even the beef curry, they finish them with coconut. Mm. So Gives it a little bit of a sweet taste. Or... Sweet taste, it's nice and creamy. Yeah, definitely creamy. Yeah. You can already see it happening right before our eyes. Oh. So now we can move the brisket anywhere you want. Like, now it just slides nicely, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And how, well, how long are you going to braise it? It's going to be eight hours. Eight hours. Yeah. Just in time for dinner. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, so next. So I add uh, coconut milk and then cook the coconut milk and add a little bit of water on it uh, and uh, make sure the seasoning is good when you put water. You don't have to be over salt because when they reduce it down, it's going to be salty, right? So okay. Make sure like enough salt in there. And then after that, you're going to put some but coriander leaves, leaves and coriander. Meat. Okay, once they're bringing to boil, then we're going to wrap them and we're going to put in the uh, oven to slowly rising for 300, 325 kind of and then it's for like eight hours don't oh. disturb it just let it just let it sit just let it sit there no peek it because that's why i put enough water here otherwise you have to be open and you have to be put hard water that's not good gonna be good flavor yeah once you keep there for any rising or any slow cooking once you love it just 
let them let them to cook slowly don't disturb them anymore so make sure before you put inside make sure your seasoning is good they have enough stock in yep. there and everything right yeah all right so time to see like enough seasoning on it so usually tasting this is a proper way to taste perfect perfect Oh, that's nice. See, that's flavor, right? The salt, oh, yeah. everything is really perfect. flavor. So when they're cooking, really, then it's going to be lots of flavor on it. Mm -hmm. So oh. it's all good. So now we're going to wrap this. Yes. This is the one more, uh, like Indian night, uh, the main course. So this is the chicken. Uh, what I did, like, is a local feed in chicken. Okay. Breast. Um, it's from uh, Silver Spring Farm. Silver Spring Farm, yes. okay. So they bring the free range chicken, it's a hormone free. So um, that chicken breasts, I pound them like a flat them, like a really. Yeah. Open and flat it. And I put tandoori seasoning on it. Tandoori seasoning? Okay. Tandoori seasoning and basil mm. and roasted red pepper. Mm. Then uh, I just roll them. Yeah. And then we're going to sweet this. Sweet it? Okay. Sweet it. Yeah. And serve it with the butter chicken sauce mm. and roti. And ro and. Roti. roti, yeah. Rogi? Roti. Roti? Roti, yeah. Okay. It's called roti. Roti, what is like, roti? Roti is like a wheat flour. Oh, okay. So we're doing our own stone ground machine. Stone ground. So we are doing our own whole wheat. We stone stone ground here. Okay. And then we make the roti of that. Oh, okay. So roti is kind of like, a, we can say non bread. Non bread is made with a white flour. Okay. And then put in the tandoori oven. But we don't have tandoori oven proper. Yeah. So what we do, like we try to make a roti. Roti. So the roti is like, Make it with a whole wheat flour, salt, a little bit of oil, okay. and then cook them on the flat top. Still a it's traditional like a flat thing. Bread. Yeah. It's kind of flat bread. Yeah. Um, but it's very, very thin. Yeah. It's for Indian soft flat bread. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Delicious. So, all okay. good. So this is going to be one of our main course. And then the appetizer we're going to do, uh, and I stuffed it in the puff pastry. Oh, okay. So make some uh, Indian spices on the paneer. Yeah. And then put it on the stuff, uh, puff pastry. Mm. And then uh, the other one is called like a uh, cola. 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 It's not. A, it's it's like a meat, meatballs. Meat okay. But like Indian spice meatball, okay. deep fried meatball. Deep fried. Yeah, deep okay. fried meatball. That's what is. It's called cola. Cola, cola urunda. In, in Tamil, it's called cola urunda in, in uh, southern India. Yeah. Um, but you can can say it's just cola meat. Meatballs. Cola meat. Meatballs. Yeah. Cola meatballs. Yes. There we go. So and Looking then the desert. Desert. We're gonna do. Uh, last time we did the mango. Yeah, that was delicious. Cake. Yeah. So. This time, uh, last time I did like kind of North Indian style. Yeah. But this time I'm trying to do it on the Southern style too. Southern style. So we're gonna style? make a payasam. Okay. It's like a vermicelli, and cooked in the milk, and some almonds and uh, some sugar. Okay. I'm trying to use the palm sugar. Palm sugar. Yeah. Okay. Or brown sugar instead of white sugar. Yeah. So it's more healthy. Yeah. And with some coconut. Coconut. Yes. And I finish them with the coconut mm. and some nuts. Oh, so that's okay. how it's gonna be our dessert. Yeah. That's really good. Right? Yeah. It sounds good. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yes. So that's our five course menu for tonight. Yeah. So hopefully they're going to be enjoying it. Last yeah. time really they enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, just, we'll have a good crowd tonight too. Yeah. And um, hopefully we're getting like uh, next time we're getting shark. We're we trying to do shark. Yeah. Shark? Yeah. Shark? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. We're going to be trying. We're trying to get some shark. Some goat. Some goat, okay, yes. okay. Yeah, goat is long, mostly like a, a, it's a strong flavor. Yeah. Um, some of them really liking it, as, but some of them they don't like a lamb or goat. Okay. Um, so we'll try. We'll try. We'll give it a try. Give it a try, and then if they don't like a goat, then we can accommodate with something else. Yeah. yeah. Ah, it'll. Well, we'll make, you'll make it work. You'll yes. make it taste delicious. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. Awesome. Right. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching this, and uh, soon we will see you guys again. Yeah. Thanks, Chef Raj, for hanging out with us today. We'll uh, stop back in in um, eight hours or so, see how the risk is going, awesome. and we'll be in for dinner. Thank you. See ya. That's a wrap. We'll, we'll be back tonight, and uh, we'll see you next time. So we're here in Canmore, Alberta, beautiful Canmore, Alberta. Rooster's Acoustics, and again, I'm here with Glenn Halford, and again, the gentleman who sold us this project, and uh, yeah, working with us. Again, we're working on getting some of that knowledge out of you. Yeah. We're going to talk about 
tops and guitars and builds and the woods that they use and why yeah. they use them. So I'm yeah. going to let you just go for it and uh, talk to us about the Metropolis. Yeah, well, the Metropolis is uh, definitely my favorite acoustic in the shop, hands down, hands down. The reason why I like it is it's got that really kind of pronounced bass, really punchy pronounced bass. The reason for that is this is a, a cedar top. Now, cedar's got a very sort of loud and dark characteristics, and uh, I really like that. Yeah, really you're like saying that. softer wood, so it's going to give yeah. you those little character yeah. marks as you use it. Yeah, I mean, it's, if you look at Willie Nelson, you know, I mean, if you want a guitar that's a little <laughs> caged, the cedar's definitely yeah. the way to go. And we've We've actually talked about this guitar before. It's like one of the kind of ones that people kind of, for some reason, pass over, and yet it's a beautiful sounding guitar. I always give it to them, and they yeah. love it when I give it to them. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I think when you've got really uh, some of the beautiful guitars we got here, I think people get like, you know, this is a bit plain. But yeah. in my opinion, yeah. it's this is for strumming. I yeah, love it. I yeah, love it. cool. So, uh, finger picking is great because you've got a lot of bass off the thumb. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds great. Really cool. Good. Moving down here, with another one of the pop most popular woods for guitars is uh, it's mahogany. We got a mahogany top right there. This is a beautiful guild again. Probably one of my favorite brands right now is guild. I really like that. Uh, a mahogany top has got again. It's got a bit of a darker tone. It hasn't really got those trebly sparks that you would get like with a, a Sitka spruce or something like that. But again, uh, not quite as loud as this. Yeah. A bit darker sounding than this, um, but it's got its own characteristics. Yeah. Now this has got a little bit of a smaller body shape too, right? A little more towards the parlor size. Well, they call this a concert size, so this okay. is like basically shrunk down and it's basically all the dimensions, it's been squeezed in a little bit. Uh, very comfortable to play, especially if you're a sort of smaller stature. A lot of women as well really like this kind of instrument, it's a lot easier to sort of yeah. get, get your arm around. A little narrower in the body. How does that affect the sound? You lose a little bit at the, uh, at the bass, uh, the wavelengths of bass are very big and you've got a lot of room there to bounce them around. So if right? you're cranking it out, it's going to condense a little bit a of little the sound bit, yeah. once you're really yeah. going at it, right? The bigger the box, the bigger the sound, the bigger yeah. the bass. Cool. Simple as that. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what else we got here? Yeah, well, this is a really interesting one that came in. This is a cheap guitar. This is only $365. When it came in, I looked at the top, and we got like a, a bear claw top that just came out of nowhere, which actually would be a lot more expensive um, if it was actually designed to have a bear claw top on it. It just happens to have one on, <laughs> which is fantastic. So that's a that's real cool. deal, that yeah. one is. Moving down then, we got, to, we got this uh, Riverson, which is a real yeah, yeah. nice guitar, one of your favorite companies. Yeah, I love that guitar. Um, really nice neck to play as well, fantastically played yeah. guitar. And uh, you know a bit about the woods on these guys, eh? Well, it's a walnut, walnut uh, neck on it, for sure. Yeah. And then the top is that uh, maple, the, what do they call it, the flame maple? Yeah, and they've got the, uh, the walnut back and sides, yeah. I believe, as well. Yeah. So it, it picks us some different kinds of woods, which is cool. Beautiful staining on it too, and yeah. I understand maple is really hard to stain because it doesn't it's a soak wood, it in, right? Yeah. It's a harder, it's a harder wood, wood, so very beautiful look. So. Absolutely, and cool. moving along, you know, we, oh, so for instance, this, uh, this Norman's an interesting pit, this, uh, guitar. So this has got a flame maple back and sides, um, a solid stick of spruce top, rosewood neck. Now this is a killer guitar as well, this sounds amazing. Again, it's got lots of bass that I like, really good. Um, but yeah, we've got pretty much all of the woods. Well, we have got all of the woods pretty much that you could get um, for guitars, Yeah, really. In another note, let's just talk quickly about the River Song. And you mentioned that you talked to the owner the other day. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so the construction of the top on these guitars is like a layered spruce. Uh, and in between each layers, it'd have like a, a, um, a laminate between them. So it'd be pressed, it's a, combina a combination of solid woods and laminates. And the reason why it's done that is to get them really stable. Now, in this environment in Alberta, we really get a lot of problems with get getting uh, this part of the, the, the top starting to come out as it gets drier. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, and this is not going to affect that so much yeah. because it's a bit more of a stable wood. Okay, so yeah. they're, they're going after that durability, that durability. long life, yeah. yeah. Cool. And this is why they put in the, um, the neck adjuster as well yeah. because it's all about making them last. Yeah, sweet. And was there one more down there? I think we were looking at earlier, the, yeah, the well, go down. Well, we got lots of them here. Yeah, this, uh, this guy here is a uh, solid spruce top mahogany back and sides. Uh, again, I really like this guitar. Uh, again, it's got that smaller size. This time it's got the cutaway. Very comfortable to play. A bit of a ripper guitar, actually. I like that too. Cool. Right on. Well, thank you, Glenn. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you next time. All right.
right, welcome back. We're back with Chef Raj. He's about to pull that uh, eight hour brisket out of the oven. We're gonna take a uh, nice look at the uh, finished product. All right. All right. Take it, bring it here. Nobody was peeking. Nobody better been peeking. All right, you see, it, it was in the oven like eight hours. So oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, that smells so good. It's pretty good. It's separating the part. So good. It's tender. Look so at this. Tender. How tender. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. How that oh. thing is going. That's so tender like that. Okay. Good idea. It's a whole brisket cooked in the curry. Look at this nice and curry. The curry, see how much water we put is all reduced. Eh? The stock and the curry spices and everything is reduced. Are you going to use that you as a that? sauce or anything? Uh, or yes, that's, uh, that's going to be our sauce. Oh, nice. So we're going to slice the brisket. The guys are going to taste with the sauce. It's a yeah. pretty good sauce. I, I you, know, you don't have to do anything with that. Just add some cilantro and uh, more mint. Just a little at the end there to freshen the it up. Yeah. And then you can use the same sauce. Mm. It has a lot of uh, flavor on it. Oh, cinnamon yeah. and gloves. So I'm going to slice this. Ooh, See that juicy? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mouth is watering. This is so tender. Like, so tender. Mm. It's nice and rice mm. is so tender. Some sauce. A little sauce, sure. Little sauce. Very sauce oh. on it. Oh. There you go. Oh man. Get it before everyone else. I'm trying to get it. It's gonna be hot. Mmm. Mmm. I like this better than the way we we do it. <laughs> this is so good. How do you feel like um, it has a flavor inside the meat, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. you, you, you feel the flavor inside the meat. Flavor on the meat. You can taste it inside the meat. And then that sauce. Go. Oh. Mm. How the spiciness is not a... Mm. It's not overly spicy. Not too salty either. So you, you nice. feel the, the creamy, the coconut. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're putting the you coconut. You can taste that coconut cream like sweetness to it. And um, the little cinnamon spice, it all kind of like just ties in together. Give it a nice little, uh, little flavor. I'm gonna finish up what I have and left. This is, a, this is a nice sauce too. Like this is a pure, it's a pure beef, like a flavor, mm, right? Yeah. You know, all that beef flavor is just left behind. Yes. All that, all this that is, brisket this fat. This is like a diamond. This is like a diamond. Yes. Yeah. For the food, this is like a diamond. Mm -hmm. Because everything is cooked in there. Yeah. Because it never goes any or out. No. So this part, like. Pretty much inside is like a diamond right mm, now. I'd say so, it's a diamond mine. It has a, like a <laughs> that much flavor on it. Yeah. It's all like unique flavors in there, nice and spice flavors. Yeah, it's not too so, spicy. It's really well rounded, really. Yeah. Nice little creaminess to it. So this kind of brisket never get like any dry. No. So it is as always moist because we're bricing them, right? Yeah. Sometimes you do uh, uh, even like smoke brisket. Yeah. Uh, they also never get dry if you don't smoke too long. Yeah. But dry temperature. Yeah. If you put a high temperature and too long, it's going to be, of course, it's going to be dry. Mm. You need to put like a lower temperature and long hours. Yeah. Then they get nice smoky flavors like that. Same like a brisket for lower, the pricing too. Lower temperature. Lower temperature, longer, longer hours. hours. That will always give more flavor and more tender on the meat. Nice. No, definitely. Okay. Definitely so, taste it. I'll so look at I want to try another this. little piece. Can you taste the sweetness from the fennel? It all just is like one deliciousness. And the meat, like it's so tender. There's a, some, some spices, what they do, they make you like more like uh, eating more. Mm. Really? Oh. Yeah, some of the spices, they make you uh, uh, appetite, like make you like hungry, more, hungry, more, more hungry. hungry, more eat. Uh, uh, that's why they have some kind of a soup in southern India. Yeah. It's called rasam. Rasam. Yeah, it has a cumin seeds and all the like garlics and ginger, not a ginger, garlic, curry leaves and uh, the fenugreek and all okay. the stuff. So ah. they make like a soup kind of. Uh, so that's make you like appetite like before like a food. They make you like really, really hungry. So it's kind of almost so like a yeah. tea. 
uh, you say? Yeah, kind of. Tea is different. Yeah. But the rasam is totally different. This kind of soup. Oh, okay. Even yeah. if you go like in India, some places they give like a before the food, oh, right? Oh, really? Yeah, they make you like more hungry because the the ingredients what they put. What they that's put. That's what in they it. make. Kind of here, like you give amuse booze. Yeah. They like a salty and like a little bit sour taste of amuse booze yeah. before appetite, right? Like that's what it is. It's just so like a big, before the big feast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is what tonight we are serving. And then I'm going to make the plating for you for all the five course menu. Oh, okay. what we're doing. sweet. So we're going to take a pictures and enjoy. Yeah, sounds good to me. Thanks for watching the whole episode and then uh, we will see you guys again. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we'll see you uh, next time. <laughs>